Hi, I'm Andrea from Andrea's Protein Cakery, and welcome to the first video in my Introduction to Protein Baking series. The most common question I get asked about protein baking is if you could use a protein powder that's different than the one called for in the recipe. So I'd like to start by showing examples of what happens if you use whey protein in place of a plant protein and vice versa. So let's take a look at these protein pancakes. So let's take a look at the pancake on your right. This is my typical protein pancake recipe. It calls for Warrior Blend protein powder, that's a pea protein blend, and egg whites. And that's a basic protein pancake. If you instead use whey protein powder with the egg whites, this is what you'll get. You can see the mixture was a bit runny and ran off the griddle a little bit. And also, it's kind of looks like egg whites, but it has a much drier, almost rubbery texture. So it's definitely not the pancake you expected to get with this recipe. So in this case, you definitely would not want to substitute whey protein powder for the Warrior Blend. Let's take a look at another example. This is a similar example. This is my protein flag cake. It's a very basic cake made with, again, the Warrior Blend protein powder and egg whites. And for the cake, I've added in some almond meal and some baking powder. So this is what the recipe normally calls for. And you can see that it's a normal cake texture. But if you instead use whey protein powder, you get this. Which is kind of spongy, dry, I don't really know what even to call this. It's very hard on the outside. Crispy. I'm not sure what that is. So. so in this case, again, you would not want to substitute the whey protein powder in place of the Warrior Blend. This is my usual pie crust recipe, which calls for a rice protein powder. And so this is the usual recipe. And this is what we get if we use whey protein instead. So let's take a look at the texture. It's kind of flaky like you want a crust to be, the original recipe. And that's almond butter, some water, rice protein powder, and you can season it with cinnamon or whatever else you like. And using whey protein instead becomes very dry. It's not flaky and it's, it's very hard. It's not quite the same as what you have here. It's a lot harder, this one. So again, in these cases, you don't want to use whey protein in place of the plant protein that the recipe is calling for. But there are other examples where, of course, we bake using whey protein, and you wouldn't want to substitute the plant proteins. So let's take a look at an example like that. This is my fudge brownie recipe, and let's take a look at it uncooked first to see such a difference. The recipe calls for whey protein, so this is what we want our brownie batter to look like. And that looks like a normal brownie batter. If you use, instead of whey protein, if you put a chocolate warrior blend, for example, you get something much different in texture. It doesn't look like a brownie batter, and it's not going to bake up like a brownie batter. So these are the uncooked versions. And so let's take a look at the cooked versions. That's our brownie. And this is something like a thick cookie. This probably still tastes good because it's, it's chocolate warrior blend with applesauce and almond butter and a little cacao and date sugar. So I'm sure it still tastes good, but it's more of a cookie texture than it is a brownie. This is more of a brownie texture. Let's take a look at one more example. Here we're looking at my black and white cookie recipe. Now this is what the recipe normally looks like. It's whey protein powder, applesauce, a little coconut flour, and baking powder. Now it's been sitting out for a little while as I prepared for the video, but you get the idea. This is what the cookie dough looks like. This is unbaked. The same recipe using the same amount of liquid using a warrior blend instead looks like this. 
it doesn't even become any kind of cookie dough. It's completely dry. Even if we add some liquid, it's not going to bake up like the whey protein in this recipe. So in these recipes, you don't want to substitute plant protein for whey protein. You want to use the whey protein. So what you've just seen is that it definitely makes a difference what kind of protein powder you use. So when you're following a recipe, you want to use the protein powder that is called for, or look in the notes section of the recipe to see if substitutions can be made. Now let's take a look at some other ingredients you might find in a protein baking recipe. It's not uncommon to see oat flour or coconut flour called for in one of these recipes. So let's talk about the two and talk about whether or not they're interchangeable. They both do act as dry ingredients, but keep in mind that coconut flour gives a much drier texture. So if your recipe calls for a half a cup of oat flour, you don't want to use a half a cup of coconut flour instead. I would half that. I would use a quarter cup instead if you wanted to make that kind of substitution. But keep in mind that something like almond flour, almond meal or almond flour, that's very different because the oat flour and the coconut flour, these are dehydrated and they're dry and they're ready to absorb liquid. But almond meal, almond flour, is just ground up almonds. So it's definitely not as dry as the other two ingredients and it's really not a substitute for either of those flours. Almond meal is kind of like a cross between a dry ingredient like these flours and a wet ingredient like applesauce. So if you wanted to replace some coconut flour and some of your wet ingredient with almond flour, that might work. Now let's talk about the nut butters. Here I have almond butter and cashew butter and also coconut butter. These all tend to have similar consistencies and in my experience it has been okay to replace one for the other. So in that case you're okay with your substitutions. But again with any recipe I suggest looking in the notes section to see if the author of the recipe wrote anything about making substitutions. So I hope this has helped you to understand what you're seeing in the protein baking recipes and understand what might have went wrong if you made some substitutions when you tried some recipes. In a later video we're going to be talking about how to create your own protein baking recipes. But in the next video I'm going to go through a whole bunch of different protein powders and talk about how I use each one of them. Thank you for watching and please feel free to share the video. Bye!